Minute Math, Minute Math. When you need help, you use Minute Math. I'm Sean Gannon. This is Minute Math. And today we're going to learn about two step inequalities. And we're going to solve each inequality and graph the solution. So if I was given this inequality, 2x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 24. Okay, so I have 2x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 24. Well, to solve that, I'm going to subtract a 4 to both sides, leaving me with a 2x is greater than or equal to 20. Then I divide by 2 to both sides, leaving me with x is greater than or equal to 10. And now I have x isolated, and it's an inequality here, so it's x is greater than or equal to 10. So let's graph this on the number line. So let's put 10 here. Let's go by 5, so we have 15 there, and 20 here, and 25, and down here we have 5, 0, and negative 5, okay? So x is greater than or equal to 10. Well, if it's equal to, we have a closed circle right here at 10, and if it's greater than, we're going to put our arrow to the right, to the right of it, okay? So where x, 10 is, uh, x is greater than those values. So now our graph matches our inequality. m over 3 minus 3 is less than or equal to negative 6. First step, add a 3 to both sides. That leaves me with m over 3 is less than or equal to negative 6 plus 3, which is a negative 3. Then I need to multiply 3 to both sides. And that has m is less than or equal to negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. But the m is isolated now, so we're done. All right? so our final answer is m is less than or equal to negative 9. But now I need to graph it. Okay? So uh, let's go back to twos here, and you, we'll see why in a second. Right? So I'm going to put 0 here, 2, let's go to negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 9, 10, negative 12, negative 14. And they tell us that m is less than or equal to negative 9. Well, if it's equal to, it's a closed circle. And negative 9 is between negative 10 and negative 8. So sometimes our number line won't actually have the exact number, and we have to put it in between them, or, or estimate really where it is. So right here is where I think the negative 9 is. And then m is less than that, so I need to put my arrow to the left. And so now I have a graph here that matches my inequality, which is m is less than or equal to negative 9. Negative 3, parentheses, p plus 1, is less than or equal to negative 18. Okay? Well, my first step is I have negative 3 there, so I need to divide by negative 3 to both sides. That leaves me with a p plus 1 out on the left, right? The negative 3s will cancel. And now, oh, I made a little mistake, right? If I'm dividing over an inequality, I need to flip the sign. So it goes from less than or equal to to a greater than or equal to. And negative 18 divided by negative 3 is a positive 6. Okay? So because we divided by the negative 3 over the inequality, we flipped it. And then I need to subtract a 1 on both sides, leaving with p is greater than or equal to uh, positive 5, 6 minus 1. And there we have it. We have p isolated here. Most important part, we flip the inequality when we divide it by negative 3 over that inequality. So now let's graph it. We have 0, 5, 10, we're going by 5, so here, 15. Just keep it consistent, whatever units you choose. Okay? Well, since p is greater than or equal to 5, we have a closed circle at p. Alright, because it can equal p, or equal 5. And then it's greater than, so our arrow goes to the right. Okay? So we have our arrow going to the right, representing all the values that p can be, as well as at 5. And so our graph matches our final answer of p is greater than or equal to 5. Negative 4, parentheses, negative 4 plus x, and parentheses, is greater than 56. Okay? My first step of that negative 4 is I need to divide both sides by negative 4. Okay? What that does is eliminate the negative 4 out here, and then I'm left with the negative 4 plus x on the inside, well, it's inside the parentheses. My inequality needs to flip from a greater than to a less than side. And 56 divided by negative 4 is a negative 14. Okay? Well, now I need to add a 4 to both sides, 
leaving me with x is less than negative 14 plus 4, which is negative 10. And now x is isolated and we're good to go. But now I need to graph it. Okay? So x is less than negative 10. So let's go put a 0 here, 2, negative 2, negative 4, let's go by 2 here, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14, and negative 16. Well, since this x is just less than negative 10, I have an open circle there at negative 10, and then we need a shade to the left because x is less than all those values. And so now I have a graph that matches my inequality of x is less than negative 10. Negative b minus 2 is greater than 8. Well, first step, add a 2 to both sides. By adding a 2 to both sides, I'm left with the negative b on the left is greater than 8 plus 2, which is 10. But now I need to multiply, get rid of that negative. You can either divide by negative 1 on both sides or multiply by negative 1. I'm going to multiply by negative 1 on this one. By multiplying by negative 1 on both sides, that gives me a positive b on the left and a negative 10 on the right. But since we multiplied over an inequality by a negative number, we flip that from a greater than sign to a less than sign. Now we have b is less than a negative 10. So now I need to write, uh, make my number line and graph this. And so uh, let's go by fives. We have 0, here's 5, and we have 5 and negative 10, or negative 5 and negative 15 and negative 20. Okay? Well, if b is in less than negative 10, we have an open circle there because it's not equal to a negative 10. And since b is less than, we put our arrow to the left. And there we have it. We have a graph that matches our inequality where b is less than negative 10. Negative 4 times 3 plus m is greater than a negative 32. Well, my first step is I need to divide by negative 4 to both sides. What that does, it eliminates negative 4 out here and gives me a 3 plus n over there. And negative 32 divided by negative 4 is a positive 8. But since I divided by a negative over an inequality, that greater than sign turns into a less than sign. Okay? So now I need to subtract a 3 to both sides. We get n by itself, and we have n is less than 5. So now I need to graph that. Take my number line here. Let's go by 1s. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we have a negative 1 and negative 2 here. Since n is less than 5, we have an open circle, because it's not equal to 5, just less than. And we draw an arrow to the left, showing all the values where n can be, all the values that are less than 5. So our graph now matches our inequality of n is less than 5. 4 plus n over 3 is less than 6. Okay? Well, first step, I'm going to bring the 4 over to the right, so I'm going to subtract a 4 to both sides. That leaves me with n over 3 is less than 6 minus 4, which is 2. From there, multiply by 3 to both sides. Gives me n by itself, right, because the 3s cancel, is less than 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay? So now I have n isolated, which is great, fantastic, and n is less than 6. So if I make my number line here to match it up, uh, we're going to find 6. So let's go by 2s here. So we have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and negative 2. Negative 4, negative 6. Well, if n is less than 6, we have an open circle at 6 because it's not equal to, just less than. And we put our arrow to the left. There, and it keeps on going forever, kind of stop it short, but it really just goes on forever. Okay? So now our graph here represents our final answer of n is less than 6. Negative 3 times r minus 4 which is greater than or equal to 0, okay? Well, I need to get rid of that negative 3, all right? So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. And in doing so, I cancel out the negative 3s over here. I'm left with r minus 4 on the left. And 0 divided by negative 3 is just 0. But I still divide it by negative over the inequality. So that inequality needs to flip from a greater than sign to a less than sign. So it's a, le or a greater than or equal to sign to a less than or equal to sign. Don't forget the equal to part. I then have to add a 4 to both, part, uh, both sides here. And in doing so, I have r is less than or equal to a positive 4. And that's looking great. So now I need to make, uh, I need to graph it. So let's go, put 4, it's right in the middle. Why not? Let's go ahead and choose 6, 
8, 10, 2, 0, negative 2. Okay? We said r is less than or equal to 4, so we have a closed circle at 4 because it can equal 4, and it's less than, so I put my arrow to the left, and there we go. I have my graph that matches my inequality of r is less than or equal to 4. Negative 7x plus 7 is less than or equal to a negative 56. Well, first step here is bring the 7 over, so I'm going to subtract the 7 on both sides. And now I'm left with the negative 7x is less than or equal to negative 56 minus the 7 is a negative 63. I then need to divide by negative 7 on both sides. And in doing so, I'm left with an x by itself on the left, and negative 63 divided by negative 7 is a positive 9 on the right. But since I divided by a negative over the inequality, that less than or equal to sign turns into a greater than or equal to sign. Okay? So now we need to graph it. X is isolated, which is great. So here comes the graph. Okay? So let's go by threes. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and negative 3. Okay? So X is greater than or equal to 9. Okay? So I have a closed circle at 9. Closed circle at 9. Since x is greater than that, I'm going to put my arrow to the right. And so now my graph matches my inequality, where x is greater than or equal to 9. Negative 3, parentheses, p minus 7, and parentheses, is greater than or equal to 21. First step, divide by negative 3 to both sides. That eliminates negative 3's out here, giving me a p minus 7 on the left. And 21 divided by negative 3 is a negative 7. But my inequality uh, flips because I divide by negative over the inequality. So it's not a greater than or equal to sign, but a less than or equal to sign. I now need to add a 7 on both sides. And hopefully this is pretty simple for you. Where p is less than or equal to, negative 7 plus 7 is 0. And there we go. p is isolated and it's looking great and fantastic. So now I need to graph it. Okay, 0, slap that in the middle. You know what? Let's go crazy with this, right? Let's make our units by 10. Who cares? Right? 10. 20, 30, negative 10, negative 20, and negative 30, okay? So if P is less than or equal to 0, at 0 I have a closed circle right there, okay? And since it's less than, my arrow goes to the left. And there we have it. Uh, we have a graph that represents all the values of what P can be, for where uh, P can be, which are P is less than or equal to 0. Negative 11x minus 4 is greater than a negative 15. First step, add a 4 to both sides. That leaves me with a negative 11x on the left is greater than negative 15 plus 4, which is a negative 11. So now I have to get x isolated. Divide by negative 11 to both sides. That gives me a positive x on the left. Negative 11 divided by negative 11 is a positive 1. But I divide it by a negative over the inequality. So that greater than sign turns into a less than sign. And so now we have x isolated, and it's less than 1. Positive 1, excuse me. So now I have to graph this. 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So x is less than positive 1. So we have an open circle at 1 because it's not equal to, right? Not equal to, and we, our arrow goes to the left because x is less than that 1. And there we have it. We have a graph here that represents where x is less than 1. of negative 9 plus a over 15, and that's greater than 1. First step, multiply both sides by 15. What that does is eliminate the 15 down here, give me a negative 9 plus a, be careful my 9s do look like a's, is greater than 1 times 15, which is 15. I then need to get a by itself more, so I have to add a 9 to both sides, which leaves me with a is greater than 15 plus 9, which is 24. Pretty simple. a is isolated. Now, make, not too many tricks to this problem here. So if a is greater than 24, great, so now we need to graph it. Okay? And so, let's put a 24, let's put it right here in the middle, 24. And let's go by 2s, 26, 28, 30, and then we have 22 to the left, 22. Keep going. Uh, not negative 18, just positive 18 and 16. So we said A, and let's go to 32, why not? Here. We said A is greater than 24, so I have an open circle 
at A, because it's not equal to 24, and then I have to shade to the right, or from an arrow to the right, because we said A is greater than 24. Now I have a graph that represents my inequality, where A is greater than 24. Negative 1 is less than or equal to B minus 2 over 21. Well, my first step is I need to multiply 21 both sides. So I multiply by 21 both sides, cancel these 21 out, leave me with a negative 21 is less than or equal to B minus 2. Now I need to uh, add a 2 to both sides. So by adding a 2 to both sides, negative 21 plus positive 2 is a negative 19, and that's less than or equal to V. We can rewrite that to have V come first, okay? So we have V here is greater than or equal to negative 19. So remember, negative 19 is less than or equal to V is the same thing as V is greater than or equal to a negative 19. And now we have V isolated and it's written first, so now we need to graph it. So, make a number line here. Uh, we have, let's say, negative 19 down here, negative 18, negative uh, 17, that's the next one, right? Negative 16 and negative 15 and negative 14, and then we have negative 20 and negative 21. Okay. Well, we said V is greater than or equal to. So equal to means we have a closed circle right there at negative 19. Then, since V is greater than, I'm going to put my arrow to the right where it's greater than negative 19. And there we have it. Our graph matches our final answer, which was V is greater than or equal to a negative 19. Negative 132 is greater than 12 times n plus 9. Parentheses. Well, my first step, I want to bring a 12 over, so I'm going to divide by 12 on both sides. Well, on the right-hand side, I'm left with just the n plus 9, but on the left-hand side, I'm not sure off the top of my head what 12 into 132 is. So 12 goes into 132, well, 12 goes into 13 one time, and 1 times 12 is 12. We subtract them, 13 minus 12 is 1, bring down to 2. It's pretty simple at this point, 12 goes into 12 one time, 1 times 12 is 12, subtract them, good to go. And so now we have 11 is our answer here. Now, Negative 132 divided by 12, and negative divided by positive is a negative, and so we have a negative 11 right there. Now, I get n isolated, so I have subtracted 9 to both sides, and negative 11 minus 9 is negative 20. So we have negative 20 here is greater than n. Let's rewrite this to have n come first, so we have n is less than a negative 20. So be careful there, right? We flip the inequality when we do that. So we have n is less than a negative 20, and that is my final answer. So now I need to graph it. So make a little number line here, negative 20, put that in the middle, negative 20, let's go by tens, negative 10, we got zero right there, negative 30, and negative 40. Okay? Now we said that n is less than a negative 20. That happens, since it's not equal to, we need an open circle. So we have an open circle at negative 20, and since n is less to, we shade to the left or put our arrow to the left there, and there we have it. We have our graph here that matches our answer, which is n is less than negative 20. Negative 11 plus n all over 15 is less than a negative 1. Well, my first step is I'm going to bring that 15 over to the right. So I'm going to multiply 15 on both sides. And that leaves me with negative 11 plus n on the left is less than negative 1 times 15 and negative 15 on the right. From there, then, I need to add an 11 to both sides. So to an add an 11 here, leaves me with n by itself on the left, and negative 15 plus 11 is a negative 4. So n is isolated, and it's less than negative 4. That's great. So now I need to graph it. So I make a little graph here. Uh, let's put negative 4 here. Let's go by 2s. Negative 2, 0, 2, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10. Well, since n is less than negative 4, it's not equal to, I need an open circle at negative 4. Then from there, since it's less than, n is less than a negative 4, my arrow goes to the left. And there we go. A better arrow there. Okay? So now I have a graph here that represents and matches our answer of n is less than a negative 4. Negative 90 is greater than or equal to negative 5 times k minus 3. Well, first step, I need to divide by negative 5 to both sides. Let's get that k by itself. 
And in doing so, I'm dividing over the inequality. That greater than or equal to sign turns into a less than or equal to sign. So I'll put that here so I don't forget. I'm left with a k minus 3 on the right, but 5 goes into 90 18 times. Okay, 18 times. But a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so we keep it a positive 18. From there, we have to add a 3 to both sides. 18 plus 3 is 21, and 21 is less than or equal to k. Now, I like to write it where k is written first, so in doing so, by having k first, I need to flip the inequality so I have k is greater than or equal to 21. So remember, 21 is less than or equal to k. It's the same statement, same meaning, same set of numbers, as k is greater than or equal to 21. k is isolated, it's written first, fantastic. So now I'm going to take my number line here and write my answer. Well, let's go put a 21 right here. 21, I mean, yeah, let's go by 1, this is fine. 22, 23, 24, and 25. And we have a 20 and a 19. And a little spacing can be a little better, but it's all good. So k is greater than or equal to 21. I have a closed circle at 21 right there because it's equal to 21. And then I need to shade to the right because we said k is greater than 21, right? So the equal to sign makes a closed circle. Greater than the sign shades to the right. And now we're done. We have our graph that matches our final answer of k is greater than or equal to 21. 4 is less than 1 plus n over 7. Well, my first step here is I need to subtract a 1 to both sides. So I'm subtracting a 1 to both sides, which leaves me there a 3 on the left is less than n over 7. Okay. Now I need to get n by itself. So to do that, I multiply 7 to both sides. And that limits the sevens over here, giving me n by itself on the right, and 7 times 3 being 21 on the left. Now, I like to rewrite this so n comes first. So I have n now is greater than 21. So before I had n, uh, 21 is less than n. Similar statement, n is greater than 21. Same set of numbers we're dealing with. Okay? So n is isolated. Fantastic. It's written first. So now we need to graph it. Okay, graph here. Put 21 on the table here. And let's go 22, 23. 24, and we have 20, 20, uh, 19 right there. Okay. Let's see. There you go. Okay. So we said n is greater than 21. Well, we need a closed circle here. Uh, sorry, open circle. Open circle, not closed circle. Open circle because we said n is not equal to 21, just greater than. So greater than 21, open circle, and then we need a shade to the right because we said n is greater than 21. And there we have it. Our graph now matches our final answer of n is greater than 21. Negative 1 is greater than 12 plus x over 4. Well, my first step is I need to multiply 4 to both sides. By doing that, I'm eliminating the 4 on the right, giving me just a 12 plus x, just the numerator, and on the left-hand side, 4 times negative 1 is a negative 4. So now I need to get x by itself, so I subtract the 12 to both sides. And in doing that, I'm left with x by itself on the right, and negative 4 plus, or minus 12 is a negative 16. Now, I like to rewrite it, have x come first. So I rewrite this, that x is less than a negative 16. So be careful. Remember, we have to flip the inequality when we flip everything here. So now we have uh, x is less than a negative 16. x is by itself, which is great. And so now we need to graph it. Take my little number line here. I'll just put negative 16 right there in the middle. Oh, let's go by 2. It's negative 14 here, negative 12, negative 10, and then negative 18 and negative 20, and why not negative 22? All right, going by 2s. Why not? I can choose it. So since x is not equal to negative 16, we have an open circle here at negative 16. Since x is less than negative 16, we put an arrow to the left or shade to the left. And so now we have a graph now that matches our final answer of x is less than negative 16. 7n minus 1 is greater than negative 169. Well, my first step, I'm going to add a 1 to both sides. When I add a 1 to both sides, I'm left with a 7n on the left is greater than negative 169 plus 1 is a negative 168. Now, I need to divide by a 7 to both sides to get n by itself. I have n by itself on the left is greater than, and I'm going to use my calculator here, what's 7 into 168. So 168 divided by 7 comes out to be 24. Now we know that's going to be a negative 24, a negative 24, because a negative 
divided by positives and negative. And so now I have n by itself is greater than negative 24. Now I need to graph it. So make my number line here. Uh, let's put negative 24 right there. And let's go by twos. Negative 22, negative 20, negative 18, negative 16, <laughs> and negative 14. Why not? And then we have negative 26 on the left and negative 28. Okay. Well, since n is greater than negative 24, we put an open circle right there at negative 24. Since it's greater than, I need to put my arrow to the right. And there we have it. We have our graph here that matches our final answer of n is greater than a negative 24. Negative 4b minus 5 is greater than a negative 25. Well, my first step here is I need to add a 5 to both sides. So by adding 5 to both sides, I'm left with a negative 4b on the left is greater than negative 25 plus 5 is a negative 20 on the right. I then need to divide by negative 4 to both sides, leaving me with b by itself on the left, and negative 20 divided by negative 4 is a positive 5. Negative divided by negative is a positive. But since I divided over the inequality, I'm going to flip this inequality to write it now as b is less than a positive 5. And there we have it. So now I need to graph it. A little graph here, let's put 5 right in the middle, and why not? Let's go by 10. 5 is 10, 15, 20, 0, negative 5. Well, they said b is less than 5, not equal to, but just less than. So since it's not equal to, we have an open circle there at 5, and then I need a shade or put my arrow to the left, showing that b is less than that 5. And now we have our graph that matches our final answer of b is less than 5. 84 is greater than or equal to a negative 7 times b minus 9. Okay? Well, my first step here is I need to get rid of that negative 7. There's multiplication there, so I'm going to divide by negative 7, opposite multiplication, to both sides. Leaving me 84 divided by negative 7, which is a negative 12. 84 divided by 7 is 12, and a positive divided by a negative is a negative. Since I divided over the inequality by a negative number, I'm going to flip that inequality to write it instead of greater than or equal to to be less than or equal to. Now I'm left with what's inside the parentheses on the right, which is b minus 9. From there, I have to add a 9 to both sides, giving me negative 12 plus 9 is a negative 3 is less than or equal to b. Then I'm going to rewrite this to have v come first, right? Because I, I, I like to have v always come first. It's easier, so v come first. Then in doing that, by flipping that, I'm going to flip the inequality back over. So we have v is greater than or equal to uh, now negative 3. And there we have it. v is isolated and it's by itself. And so v is greater than or equal to negative 3. And now I need to graph it. So let's make our graph here. Hopefully it can fit. I think it can fit. Okay. Negative 3. Let's go by 1. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. And then negative 4, and negative 5, and negative 6. We well, said v was greater than or equal to a negative 3, so I'm going to put a closed circle right there at negative 3, and then I'll put my arrow to the right. What that says is that all of this graph here to the right is what v can be, and v is greater than negative 3, as well as can equal negative 3 because of the closed circle. So our graph that matches the final answer, which is v is greater than or equal to a negative 3. Negative 8 plus r over 2 is greater than a negative 8. Well, first step, I want to get rid of that 2. So I'm going to multiply 2 to both sides. Leaving me with just, they cancel out here, negative 8 plus r on the left is greater than negative 8 times 2 is a negative 16. I then see that negative 8 there. I'm going to bring that over. So I can add an 8 to both sides. Leaving me r by itself on the left is greater than a negative 16 plus a positive 8 is a negative 8. So now r is isolated, and it's greater than a negative 8. And that's our final answer. So now I need to graph it. So let's put a negative 8 here. Let's go by 2, so negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, and we have 0 here, and positive 2, and we have negative 10 right there. So as we said, r is greater than negative 8. Not equal to, just greater than. We have an open circle at negative 8. Then I need to shade to the right, because we said r was greater than negative 8, so we shade to the right. That's it. Our graph now matches our inequality, which is r is greater than negative 8. x over a negative 6 minus 8 is less than or equal to a negative 12. Okay? 
Well, first, I want to add an 8 to both sides. So when I add an 8 to both sides, I'm left with an x over negative 6 on the left, and so less than or equal to, but negative 12 plus 8 is a negative 4. Now I need to multiply negative 6 to both sides to eliminate that. So I multiply by negative 6, excuse me, to both sides. Cancel out that negative 6, leave me x by itself. Now I multiply by negative over an inequality, so I need to take that less than or equal to sign to be a greater than or equal to sign. And the negative 4 times negative 6 is a positive, positive 24. A negative times a negative is a positive. And now we have x isolated, and it's by itself, it's written first, so we have x is greater than uh, or equal to a 24, which is my final answer. But now I need a graph it. Okay? So let's put 24 on the table here. So let's put 24 right here. 24, let's go by 2s, 26, 28, 30, 32, I know, 34 and 36, and 22 and 20 here on the left. Okay? Well, since x can be equal to 24, I have a closed circle at 24, right? And then x is also greater than, so I need to shade to the right. And that's it. Our graph now matches our answer, which is x is greater than or equal to 24. m minus 3 over 2 is less than or equal to 5. Okay? Well, my first step is I'm going to multiply 2 to both sides. So I multiply both sides by 2. Giving me m minus 3 on the left is less than or equal to 5 times 2, which is 10. I then need to add a 3 to both sides, opposite of that subtraction. Giving me an m by itself on the left is less than or equal to 10 plus 3, which is 13 on the right. And there we have it. We have m is less than or equal to 13 as our final answer. But now we need to graph it. So we're going to a line down, or number line, excuse me, down there. And let's put a 13 right here. 13, let's go by 1's, 14, 15. 16, and we have uh, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, okay? Well, since m can equal 13, I'm going to put a closed circle right there at 13, and then we need to shade to the left because we said m is less than that 13. So now I have a graph that represents that m is less than or equal to positive 13. Minute math, minute math, when you need help you use minute math. Minute math, minute math, when you need help you use minute math, minutemathtutor.com.